Hello everyone, my name is Daniel. I'm from the University of Liverpool and I'm a fourth year PhD student in the Department of Archaeology, Classics and Egyptology. I've just submitted my thesis two weeks ago. So Archaeology, visualising big data and open scholarship is more of a description of what I've been doing over the last few years rather than the title. It's also a description of what I plan on doing over the next few years too. This short talk will briefly outline my background and my research and how they fit within the theme of open scholarship and visualisation. So first, a bit of background about me. I've got an undergraduate degree in History and Information Communication Technology with an emphasis on image manipulation and 3D graphical reconstruction using techniques such as photogrammetry. I have a Master's degree in Archaeology and of course I've got my ongoing work on my PhD preparing for my back. I've also worked on many different interesting digital heritage projects throughout the course of my studies. I've worked for the National Pipe Archive, an institution founded to collect and preserve documentary and archaeological evidence related to the history and culture of clay pipe smoking. I was responsible for digitising their resources so that they could be made more widely accessible. This task was to cater for the needs of professional field and museum based archaeologists as well as more amateur community groupings and the wider public. I've also worked for the Merseyside Historical Environment Record Office in digitising their site monument records. This entailed cross-checking with historic mapping, data entry, and ensuring that the new digital records met the modern recording standards required for both commercial, academic, and public consumption. This digitisation process utilised geospatial software, HSBMR, to map cultural heritage, whilst also conforming to, to the standards regarding privacy, data protection, research, and I too have participated in an interesting international workshop entitled Challenging Paternity, Heritage, Urbanisation, Interventions in the City of Rome. This was a 10 day workshop hosted by the Royal Netherlands Institute in Rome, Kinnear, which studied the complex interrelation between urban development politics and the preservation, utilisation, transformation, and interpretation of cultural heritage. The workshop is particularly relevant as archaeology and the public, sorry, the workshop is particularly relevant as it focused on archaeology and the public which set a discussion on the ethical and the appropriate methods of communicating with and educating broader non-specialist audiences. Connected to this discussion were challenges for future heritage management and how commercial stakeholders might best collaborate and connect across disciplinary specialists when designing inter interventions for or utilising cultural heritage. So really, cultural heritage, digitisation, urbanisation are my key themes, if you will, they're what have informed a lot of my work. So, on to the full part. Oh, a lot of these. So there's the workshop, uh, there's the record service, pipe archive, and that is one of the principal pipes. And this full one, which is a Wellington and a bit of a rude gesture from a chap behind him on the ball of the pipe. Does make a difference. Okay, so I'm a classical archaeologist interested in the Iron Age of the Mediterranean with a focus on Italian archaeology. Although my work extends beyond traditional classical archaeology and touches on sub-disciplines including anthropology, computational statistics and cultural analytics. There are a number of interconnecting themes that inform my research. These themes include identity and cultural translation, cross-cultural consumption and communication, visualisation and fashionology. An important part of my research is the integration of innovative methodological and theoretical approaches into considerations of visual representations depicted upon or within archaeological material. My PhD research and plans for postdoctoral research are based on digital humanities scholarship and cultural heritage. Primarily, my work questions how we can explore and display patterns in massive visual collections which may contain hundreds or thousands of images. It develops a technique to describe and visualise the characteristics of cultural processes which have received little or no attention by taking into account all available cultural objects within a particular cultural data set. Okay. So these are or <coughs> where my PhD research aims. The focus of my research so far has been on the assemblage of tomb paintings in Tarquinia, which comprise the only extent assemblage of large scale paintings from the classical world before the Roman period. My work statistically examines and visualises the depictions of dress within Tarquinian frescoes by the use of a hierarchical clustering analysis performed by a software that is free, that is easily available. And it, it stresses the importance and usefulness of dress, which is something I can very much appreciate with the airline having lost my luggage. 
<laughs> I actually have all the clothes on my back at the moment. So that's where Tarquinia is located, about 70 kilometers northwest of Rome. Almost all of Tarquinia's tombs and wall paintings were hollowed out of the ridge at the Montevots in the Acropolis. That is what it looks like today, and before you guess, they are not ancient constructs, they're 1980s prefabs sort of thing. Uh, we suspect that they used to look like the ones at Chedetri, those uh, false vault in the projecting tombs, but of course we've got no proof there. So Tarquinia was a very prominent and powerful Etruscan city. My work represents a new way to engage with their tomb paintings, a big data set, and to make it more accessible to researchers and non-specialists alike. There are about 200 painted Tarquinian tombs out of 6,000 or so burials recorded at the site, which researchers have struggled to interpret and make sense of for a very long time. Famously, D.H. Lawrence wrote about them in Etruscan places. My research takes a unique approach in tackling the issue of how to deal with and understand this large corpus of paintings. So, just to emphasise a, a few selections of the images that I've been working with over time. I say they're very pretty. And that's the last one. Yeah. So, the paintings and their depictions of dress in particular, in my research in this instance, are statistically quantified and then analysed to generate a visualisation of painted dress instructions throughout the entire assemblage of the two paintings. This is the dendrogram, a hierarchically branching tree of similarity. While useful, the output of visualisation is not very user friendly, as I think you can all tell, uh, especially for someone colour blind like me. I, I did make it more. You know, uh, so, uh, so we can select a segment of the visualisation, which hopefully you've just seen zoom in there. Uh, this selection can then be transformed into a tabular format and then we can transform it into a more friendly visualisation of the groupings of different dress. So, I employed a digital mechanism. This example has identified and visualised the dress of fair suit. This process can also quantify and visualise the other content types and relationships in this painting. So while that is the dress of Fairsu that has been identified, we can also tell what other articles and things that he was depicted with in the two paintings. And there, there is the actual Fairsu with his dress in the two paintings. Okay, so my research expands how we can think about approaching this big visual data from the ancient world. It raises the possibilities of moving seamlessly from a micro to a micro scale of analysis when working with a large data set of images. It's not just the methodological tool, but the perspective that is important. Digital humanities approaches need to consider both the theoretical and the methodological that links the two things together. So I think I'm going to have to skip that slide. Actually, so. My key goal is to use computational techniques to investigate big cultural data sets to question basic cultural concepts and methods. I think conspicuous by its absence in this instance is open scholarship, and that's kind of the point. I've worked with data and resources that are by no means free or easily accessible, and it's interesting to investigate how visualisation can make these types of resources more open, and what extent open archaeological and to what extent open archaeological data can be used, particularly when utilising free software. And I think I've got. Work, which, and then the figurines from Lipari, which is another big data set containing 12 of the Russian items. Oh, thank you very much for listening.